Good afternoon. Thank you for being with us on THV 11 News this Tuesday. I'm Karen Fuller in for Journey Taylor. Let's get straight to what's happening today. Former President Donald Trump is to make his first court appearance just under two hours from now. The former president is facing an indictment over his alleged mishandling of classified documents. We'll take you to Miami where supporters are already gathering. New worries over young people opting for weight loss surgery. Results of a new study are out and they are raising concerns. We'll share all you need to know before scheduling any procedure. Plus some 20,000 Arkansas children now without Medicaid coverage. For the biggest group of kids that are losing Medicaid are those that are in the lowest income families. Ahead, see why that number is expected to climb. But first, let's check in with Nathan and get you caught up on your forecast for this Tuesday. Nathan? Good afternoon, Karen. We did have a heavy downpour that made its way right through Little Rock. Now the sun is shining once again, but there are a few downpours down the landscape out there this afternoon. Here's a radar loop right now. Not everybody's seeing the rain. Not everybody will see the rain out there this afternoon, but there's that one lone downpour making its way through southeast Little Rock at this time, drifting its way down to the south and southeast. A few showers down the landscape into White County. Could have maybe a rumble of thunder. Also, we got a one lone downpour slicing its way just the north of Caddo Valley. That's making its way off to the east. Remember, anytime you hear thunder, you want to get indoors because any storm can produce a deadly lightning strike. Through the rest of the afternoon, we'll still have a chance of spotty showers and storms, especially for South Arkansas. That's where the highest risk of rain will be located, and that's where there could be some strong, possibly severe thunderstorms. So any storm that does develop in this type of environment could produce maybe some small to large size hail, maybe as large as golf balls right along the border of Arkansas and Oklahoma, also Arkansas, and Louisiana, excuse me, and also the winds. It could be gusty at times, about 50 to 60 miles per hour. The tornado threat very, very low, but it cannot be ruled out once again for extreme South Arkansas. Here's your plan today. Temperature is topping out to the low to mid 80s. We continue to see this until weather pattern remain in place. Another round of showers and storms expected later tonight. More on that forecast coming up. Nathan, thank you. Former President Trump is nearing the time of his arraignment in federal court in Miami today. The former president faces a total of 37 counts related to his alleged mishandling of government documents after leaving the White House. Christian Benavidez reports from Miami for us. It will be house arrest. Let's hope it's not the White House. Protesters are gathering outside the Miami courthouse where former President Donald Trump is expected to arrive this afternoon. We're here to show Trump's support because this guy here, Jack Smith, thinks that because he arrested Trump that everybody's going to be scared to support him. Special counsel Jack Smith arrived in Miami Monday evening. He alleges Trump illegally retained classified documents, storing them at his Mar-a-Lago home and conspired to hide them from the government who had subpoenaed Trump to get them back. The former president is expected to plead not guilty to the 37 counts. They have one shot to block him from the White House and make no mistake, their goal is to put him in prison. So it's time for battle. Today's arraignment is expected to be quick. Then Trump plans to head back to his New Jersey golf club to rally with supporters and meet with campaign donors tonight. Trump's poll numbers have risen since his indictment, but some Republicans are expressing concern the case will hurt their chances of defeating President Biden. For us to win the presidential race in 2024, we don't need to be distracted. We need to be focused on the future. Trump says he will not quit, even if he's convicted. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg is spending time in Philadelphia today to see firsthand the I-95 disaster. You recall a tanker truck carrying 8,500 gallons of diesel fuel crashed, catching fire Sunday, causing part of the highway structure to collapse. It shut down a portion of one of the nation's busiest highways. J.P. Morgan Chase is agreeing to a $290 million settlement for victims of deceased financier Jeffrey Epstein. That's according to a source familiar with the case. And it closes out a lawsuit filed by victims who claimed Epstein wouldn't have been able to pay for his sex trafficking operation without the bank.
This celebration for NBA champions, the Denver Nuggets, is marred by a mass shooting in a crowd gathered overnight. Police say nine people have been shot, the suspect as well. Three of the victims are in critical condition, with the others said to be suffering from non-life-threatening injuries. The suspect is also expected to recover. Before the shootings, huge crowds were out and about celebrating the first ever NBA championship for the Denver Nuggets. The Nuggets defeating the Miami Heat in Game 5 of the NBA Finals last night by a score of 94 to 89. The celebration did get a little out of hand at times. People climbing light poles, not a good idea, of course. And the plans are to host a celebration parade officially in downtown this coming Thursday. Happening today here at home, the city of Little Rock is taking the next step in potentially expanding the nighttime curfew for people under 18. But before it happens, city dire directors say they want to hear from you, the public. They're holding a special meeting this afternoon at 4 o'clock for public input. Right now, the curfew law is from Sunday to Thursday, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. The new ordinance would add a special rule for weekends, forcing kids and teens to be inside from midnight to 5 a.m. Today's meeting is at the center at University Park on 12th Street near the Rebsman Tennis Center. And the Conway School Board holds its first meeting today with two new members. As you recall, we told you last month, two conservative members on the school board were defeated in the May election. Sheila Franklin ousted Jennifer Cunningham and Trey Geyer defeated Bill Milburn. The Conway School Board has faced months of public backlash over controversial decisions, including a transgender bathroom policy and bans on books. Today's school board meeting is set for 6 p.m. As the Arkansas Supreme Court considers when the LEARNS Act will take effect, one group began gathering signatures in the hopes of bringing the education reform plan to you, the voter. We've been reporting on the ongoing legal challenges for months, and last night the governor says she's confident the court will rule in the state's favor. THV 11 Sarah Horbakowitz take takes a closer look at what is next for LEARNS. Learns itself is hundreds of pages, addressing nearly every aspect of your child's education, from school choice to how they're taught. But the act's path ahead is a complicated one, filled with legal processes. One thing is clear, though, both those for and against Learns are getting more vocal as a Supreme Court decision gets closer. All those things are currently on hold because I believe people are trying to play political games with our kids' future. At a town hall in Salem Springs Monday, Governor Sanders expressed frustration with the legal action being taken against LEARNS. A group behind the lawsuit delaying the act is the Citizens for Arkansas Public Education and Students, or CAPES, working against LEARNS in more ways than one. For us, we feel like such an impactful piece of legislation really should be put up to the voters. Starting this week, Chair Veronica McLean says CAPES is canvassing Arkansas, looking for signatures to put LEARNS on the 2024 ballot. The official number is 54,422 signatures of registered voters in the state of Arkansas. We are aiming for 90,000 within 50 counties. All of those signatures are due July 31st. McLean hopes to use the weeks leading up to that date to answer any questions Arkansans may have. The LEARNS Act was a large bill, it was 145 pages long, and it was pushed through very quickly. Governor Sanders is also trying to answer questions at town halls, confident in LEARNS and that it will pass. We are simply delaying the inevitable. At this point, uh, we have ongoing litigation. Um, I feel very confident that at the end of the day, the court is gonna rule in our favor. We should know more information about what's next for LEARNS at the trial date on June 20th to determine when LEARNS will go into effect. Expect to hear plenty of that noise coming from Camp Robinson in Pulaski County starting today. The Arkansas National Guard is warning people who live within earshot of the training facility to expect some loud booms. Military exercises are expected to wrap up by this Friday. 
Now you have a week and a half left of debris pickup in Little Rock from the March 31st tornado. The deadline is now Sunday, June 25th. The city reports over the past few weeks, the volume of debris collected has dwindled. City contractor DRC Emergency Services has gone from close to 15,000 cubic yards a day to just a few thousand. Residents can still place storm debris within 10 feet of the curb for that final pickup. One Little Rock group is pushing for the return of a statewide program with money going towards keeping you safe. The Storm Shelter Rebate Program used to give up to $1,000 to people who installed storm shelters or safe rooms in their homes. It ended in 2016. Members of the Coalition of Little Rock Neighborhoods say they've already spoken to Little Rock Mayor Frank Scott Jr. about the program, but they'd like to bring it back statewide. The first duty of any government is the protection of the citizens. So let's save lives and let the state surplus be applied to as many rebates as we can find. A spokesperson for the mayor says they hope to speak soon with the Arkansas Division of Emergency Management. That is who ran the program the first time and will keep you updated. A new study urges careful consideration before scheduling weight loss surgery for young people. Everything you need to know in two minutes. But first, let's go back to Nathan and talk about the forecast. Showers and storms are still bubbling up across parts of the region, Karen, and this pattern will stay unsettled for the next several days. Then we're going to heat things up. It could feel like over 100 degrees by this weekend. More on that coming up.